Hi, this is Richard from In The Box Productions. I hope you're all having a great day. Uh, so let's uh, get started with this third instalment of how to make a song from A to Z in Logic Pro X. Before we start, there's something I forgot to mention, is that when you first install Logic, you have preference advanced tools that you need to look at. Here we have enable all. This will tick all of these uh, advanced tools for you. If you don't enable all these, this will stay as uh, kind of like a, a garage band version of Logic, a simplified version. Uh, we need to have all these functions activated so then we can then work uh, with Logic Pro at its full extent. So let's get on with um, looking at more drums here and uh, all the uh, different options that we have in Logic. So here we have this Apple loop that I brought in and the kick drum that I did with the Ultra Beat here. And it sounded quite cool already, but uh, we can do a lot better than that. So let's close up this window here and have a look at the possibilities of this fantastic program. So if you go up to here, and let's have a look at the drummer. Now it asks you if you want a, a rock drum set or an alternative or songwriter R&B, let's stick with rock. I want to stick with rock because what I want to do is create like a break. And uh, what happens here is it, it creates this track that looks like audio, but it's not, it's MIDI. I'll prove you that by just copying that over to the MIDI track here, and then it's automatically, you see it as MIDI. Now, if I play that here, this track you will hear like a real drummer. And if I play this on my electronic drum software instrument, you can hear it's playing out the drum machine. So as I told you, remember this is just information that you can see here. Let's get rid of that. Now, as I said, this is not audio, this is MIDI, but they've done this. This is something new they did a few years back in Logic. If we go over to this little drawer here, it shows us the, the drummer, whose name is Carl. Now let's listen to him on his own, solo the track. As you can see, that's a, a pretty real sounding drum kit there. If I click on someone else, it will change it to another, another kit. So here we have like the drum kit here with different sounding drum kits. And then we have the style of drummer here that are in the category rock. And here we have these rock drummers. If we go to alternative, we have these alternative drummers, songwriter, R&B. These are all different drummers. I don't know if they're real people, but they do sound like real drummers. This is pretty versatile because if you double click on the um, the actual drum kit itself, you can see this here and you can play around with these bits here. Or this one here. So there you can change stuff within it. And uh, if we double click on this, this opens up this here as well. Add like toms to it symbols hi-hats and here we can actually adjust the volume and stuff to the kit quite uh, a serious plug in this that they created not so long ago the thing I use it for which I really like if I go back to my drummer here like this this fills and what I do is I use this as like a, a fill at the end of my sequence. So, so what I do is I put the fills up and you hear this. So I like the rock fill was a bit better. I'm going to change the drummer now. And that will change any modifications that I made to the, to the uh, sequence. We can add some toms. So 
but for now, let me just keep that as a break at the end of the uh, sequence here. So what I'm going to do here is bring my levels down here. Now, if I close this for now, if I select these like this, I can move these at the same time, which is really practical. This is something that you do automatically after a while of producing. You just make sure that your levels are always in the right place, you know. I like to work at least at about minus three, four dB on my output. I would prefer that to be here to make this a proper sequence. We can copy this here. I can just copy that one down as well. Then we've got an eight bar sequence with the with this at the end of it. We can divide these up. What I usually do is I select the region like this, then I bring up my scissor tool. Okay. Now, if you press on out at the same time, there's a little plus comes up like that. You can see next to it. So if I cut on this division here, it will then divide that region by this division here. That'd be an eighth because we've got the grid at 16. Come back to my pointer. These I won't be needing. Get rid of this. And here, what I'll do is uh, copy one, two, mute this for now. Okay, so we can even divide it up even more by just going there, uh, put this on one track here. I could have divided this straight to um, 16th, but that's okay for now. Now here we have a percussion. Uh, I'm going to make another track up and then divide that there. Remember holding down command will bring up my secondary tool. This will pull here, so we have these different elements on different tracks, and I can then do things with them. We can modify them the way we want to, basically. So what I'm going to do now is divide this up, because it takes a little bit of time, and I'll come back in about three seconds. Right, so I've chopped this up. It's looking good. Now, there is another drum machine in, in Logic, which is called the Drum Machine Designer, which is uh, very powerful. And bring that in here. And it's right down here, Drum Machine Designer. Now, this is crazy. This has got so much stuff in it that it's unbelievable. So if you look, you've got all these sounds here. Got all the controls here. Then you've got a, a wide selection of different types of uh, atmospheres like after party, big room. But the only problem I have with this is that it automatically puts this massive channel strip plug-in list here inserted already. And if you look on the on the mixing desk here, let me just close this window here. Now here you have a little arrow. Now, this drum machine here has separate outputs for each sound. So if you click on that, that opens up all these tracks. Now, that is great. But when you start trying to mix that stuff, it's, it's madness. I used it once and it became really complicated to just to bounce the, the, the individual instruments down to audio. So I kind of avoid it, but it is really powerful. And maybe some of you guys will find a use for it more than I will but there's so much choice in Logic there's so many different ways of making beats so anyway I'm going to delete that we'll be just sticking to the basic 
ultra beat drummer and just chopping up apple loops so i hope you liked this video if you did like subscribe and i'll be back soon and don't forget to leave some comments